It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly Media Roundup. I'm Roland Boyd, and I'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes, a jam-packed 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news. It's a weekend edition of 5.45 Live. Let's uh, take a look at what's coming up on deck tonight. We'll uh, start by talking about uh, the Red Cross's request for money from Vermont Yankee to expand their evacuation plan, all that Dummerston DRB select board drama. Uh, might change up with a new chair there, and uh, it's Gallery Walk, so we're going to go live there as well. All that and more. We do it in 15 minutes or less. We'll talk about the new uh, Brattle Bros select board as well, uh, and some marriage equality stuff in there. So, if you've got the time and the attention span, stick with us right here on 545 Live. puzzled. I mean, I heard one of them say yesterday, if we affirm this, uh, it could mean that uh, gay couples would be able to adopt. I was like, really? Uh, they're just figuring this one out? I mean, we did an ado adoption in Vermont, I want to say almost two decades ago. Welcome back to this April 5th, 2013 edition of 545 Live. That's footage of Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin at a press conference this week discussing marriage equality, perhaps uh, the spring's hottest topic in the national news stratosphere. It's both the Defense Against Marriage Act and California's Prop 8 anti-gay marriage legislation have found their way to the U.S. Supreme Court. And while the ruling on Prop 8 isn't expected until June, the majority of mainstream media on both sides of the issue, including an exuberant Rachel Maddow and a very bitter Rush Limbaugh this week, have already called it in favor of marriage equality. California's Prop 8, a ballot option to strip gay couples of the right to marry, was passed in 2008, and while the California Supreme Court upheld the measure, Prop 8 has since been ruled a violation of the Constitution's 14th Amendment clauses for due process and equal protections uh, in federal district court and the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, where it was overturned in 2010 and 2012, respectively, with the Ninth Circuit stating that, quote, Proposition 8 serves no purpose and has no effect other than to lessen the status uh, and human dignity of gays and lesbians in California. The brief goes on to say that the Constitution simply does not allow for laws of this sort. Now with Vermont jumping ahead of the nation a time or two, uh, with uh, civil union laws passed in 1999 and marriage equality itself in 2009, uh, it can be easy to think the hard work is over. Uh, that says Ken Schneck, one of the radio personalities behind the nationally syndicated talk show This Show is So Gay. But hate crime, employment discrimination, and personal safety laws are often more important in the fight uh, for equality. The dilemma that many folks are faced with who were vehemently not for marriage and suddenly are living in a state where marriage is it's perhaps easy to be against marriage when, it, when it's uh, not legal. And now that it's legal in some states, up more and more. All right, Shimlin's in our next story as well as we talk about Vermont Yankee. Our newest intern, Marco Skorstad, has been tasked with uh, learning all he can, becoming our Vermont Yankee expert, which is why we're going to go to him now for this next story. Marco, thanks for joining us. I'll just let you sure. uh, take it away. Uh, take a stab at this script you've written yourself. Right. In recent news, Governor Shumlin has endorsed a plan asking Vermont Yankees owner to give $770,000 in order to fund a Red Cross emergency plan for evacuation. The plan would help include providing whoops, the plan would include providing temporary shelter and food for 6,000 people who live nearby. Larry Christ, an executive from Red Cross, has said that the funding plans in place aren't uh, addressing the most important parts of an emergency plan, housing and food. He said that even though the evacuation will only take hours, the need for shelter and food for victims could be as long as months. The current plan is only set up to help around half the people included in the updated proposal. More news on this will follow. Our new 545 Live intern, Marco Skorstad, reading uh, part of the script that he's been working on with me for this show. Uh, you can find out more uh, on this topic at reformer.com, where there's an article uh, detailing the Red Cross's plan. All right. Uh, we're going to head on here now and talk about a few more things uh, in this edition of 545 Live. Dummerston Select Board members have publicly stated that their decision not to reappoint Herb Rest as chair of the town's development review board is not fallout from Rest's comments last month that the Select Board had bullied the DRB and, quote, 
called us names and ran away. Controversy first arose after a DRB decision to deny one local couple's application for an in-ground pool, among other things, uh, came under fire from the select board. But despite early comments, select board chair Zeke Goodband set the record straight at this week's regular meeting, stating that an objective analysis of the DRB had turned up no instances of bias in their decision making. We'll start uh, by looking at this week's clip here. I've read more than two dozen development review board decisions, and I can discern no instances of bias or prejudice. They perform a valuable service to the town for which I am grateful. They volunteer their time and put great effort into evaluating each case that comes before them. Now you can find all of these Demerston Select Board meetings at brettlebrotv.org where you can watch them at your leisure on our video on demand courtesy of our field producer Rich Melanson. Included in that slew of meetings are the meetings where uh, former DRB Chair Erbrest made the original comments mentioned in this story. Let's take a look. I think this board has bullied us. I think you basically call in names and run away. I don't think yeah. it's intentional, but I think that's happened. All right, we'll continue our municipal talks here with uh, the Brattleboro Select Board right here uh, in this 230 Main Street Studios, just a few drops down from this rooftop studio of ours. Brattleboro Select Board has appointed nine members to the new Police Fire Oversight Committee. There were originally supposed to be just seven members, but two more were appointed uh, when the board was unable to break a tie in their vote this past Tuesday at the regularly scheduled meetings. Members of the committee will oversee the $14 million renovations for the police and fire stations, uh, a renovation that's been highly controversial. Controversial? Versial? You can say both. I've heard it both ways. Uh, that uh, incurred its own special town meeting this past fall where it was approved uh, and plenty of talk uh, despite Vermont law that forbids it at this town meeting here. The committee will be called soon to meet with the project manager. Let's take a look at uh, footage from interviews with the candidates. Although the previous board in February had adopted a size of the committee, I want to make sure that before we take the nominations and vote on committee members that everybody on this board is comfortable with the uh, uh, plans for how that committee is going to be constituted before we vote to uh, put members on that committee. Again, all these meetings can be found at brattlebrotv.org, including that their select board meeting in its uh, close to four hour glorious entirety. All right, moving on. Curbside composting is coming to Brattleboro, another nation-leading move for our fair town here. The program, which will allow residents uh, already having their trash and recycling collected, to add a third bin to the route. A bin you can purchase for $7 and pack with 12 gallons of your week's biodegradables, which not only include composting classics like vegetable peels or coffee grounds, uh, but also the additions of greasy pizza trays, frozen food containers, sugar or flour bags, and cooking oils. You can even chuck cooked or raw meat, shellfish, and dairy products like cheese in there as well. Not to mention pet products like cat, uh, kitty litter. You can jam a lot of stuff in this compost. Now they've even listed, quote, small wooden crates like those used for clementine, strawberries, or raspberries uh, in the town PDF press release detailing all the info like where to sign up, when it will start, and questions like, isn't composting really yucky? One of their queries turned up in the town's wildly successful money-saving pilot program, and one answered by Brattleboro Recycling Coordinator Moss Kaler when he spoke to BCTV about the program. Everybody's had the experience of the trash can really start smelling. But when you curbside compost, you're isolating them from the rest of your trash and you're handling them separately. That full interview can be found at brettlebrotv.org and we've posted it on our 545 Live Facebook page as well, which uh, includes the PDF with all this info about how to sign up. Uh, all right, and with that, uh, we'll keep the stories coming. Not only is it Friday, but the first Friday uh, in this here month of April, thus triggering Brattleboro's monthly tourism drug, Gallery Walk, a townwide opportunity for merchants, artists, gallery owners, and more to engage the public. Uh, with their work and an always impressive number of events along Main Street and beyond. And we've got uh, my hardworking, often co-captains, Joe Bushy and Daryl Pillsbury on tap with our split screen here to uh, talk just uh, a little bit about Gallery Walk. They're standing downtown, I believe, hooked on to uh, the works and their uh, Wi-Fi for a live Skype cast. If we can indeed get all the components together here, Let's see if we can make this happen. All right, guys, let's uh, let's fire it up here. Daryl, tell us a little bit about uh, this gallery walk uh, adventure. 
Hey guys, thanks uh, for having me on. Uh, we're live right down here at the April Gallery Walk, and as you can, it's just now getting started. Uh, they're setting up the tables now. A little breezy, weather's nice. If you're watching this at home, folks, come on down. It's our gallery walk night. Uh, a lot of stuff to do. It should be pretty festive here. So anyway, you know, come on down. See what's happening. Food, fun, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, for 545 Live, this is Daryl Pillsbury. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, Daryl uh, Pillsbury, Joseph Bushy, hard work and volunteers. They'll be at uh, Tape and a special Pulse of Brattleboro. This one will be Joe at the helm of a, a quick 30-minute piece about all the happenings downtown. You'll be able to find it next week right here on PCTV Channel 8 and online at brattlebrotv.org. A few uh, more things to uh, of note to check out at this here gallery walk, including uh, Six Feet Under, a painting and photo opening of local cemetery images that's going on as we speak right now at the Latches Theater, and Tom Goss in concert at the Hooker Dunham at 8 p.m. tonight. Also worth noting, you can stop by the River Garden for the Youth Services Summer Camp Fair. You can get uh, info on a cornucopia of camps around the area that include BCTV's Young Newsmakers, which offers campers ages 9 to 12 a chance to produce their own news stories from around the community and debut them for friends and family during a live recording of an evening news program at week's end. Now you can get uh, all the info on this here summer camp uh, by going to rattlebrotv.org where uh, you can head to learn and there's actually a whole page for the summer video camp here. We've got photos, we've got videos from the last couple of years. And we've got the clip. We must have been sent back to the Wild West. But why? My calculations were exact. Don't look at me, I didn't do anything. Uh... What did you do? Well, I had some of those mini bagel pizzas. What? Have you ever tried eating one of those cold? You fool, you must have messed up my calculations. Yeah, you fool. Shut up, Jerry. All right, a few more uh, things to wrap up here, so I want to make sure we jam pack it in, have enough time. Uh, we'll start by talking weather. This is courtesy of BUHS TV, the morning uh, news advisory program from the high school. Here's my forecast. Today we have a high of 55 and a low of 25. Tomorrow we have a high of 47 and a low of 31. Full broadcast of BHS TV is going to show in just a matter of minutes at 6 p.m. right here on BC TV Channel 8. You can catch it weekday mornings, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, two clicks up the dial on our government and education sister channel, Channel 10 at 10.15 a.m. A few more things. We'll talk sports. Uh, again, we head to BUHS, where the girls lacrosse, varsity lacrosse, uh, had a scrimmage with NMH that we get some video of. Uh, their actual games uh, start uh, this coming Monday. There'll be one at 4 at Amherst. Um, but the act won't actually come to Natowich Field until the 27th. Hopefully we'll get more video though so you can follow along from afar. Let's take a look at some of the scrimmage. We'll be back Tuesday with another special uh, live broadcast, Midweek Report, 5.45 p.m. right here on BCTV Channel 8. And of course, you can find all our videos and plenty more on our Facebook page and uh, also at brittlebrotv.org. All right, 10 seconds left. The timing's perfect. I'll uh, leave you uh, with just a, a little bit of this end credit roll uh, where you get to see some uh, take some bloopers. Uh, get the titles. In the meantime, I'm Roland Boyden. Night, everybody. I can't even read the quote because it would violate all our FCC standards, but I'm not a bigot, but, and then just pretend, because I can't read it, that it was the most homophobic stuff. And But apparently by starting Could it by saying I'm not a bigot. some of the words? No. Or no. <laughs> That's how bad it was. But keep in mind, he's, he's not, not a, a bigot. bigot. <laughs>